Now, we're almost through the program. Um, we have one more thing that I'd like to do before we round off, actually two, but the second is a surprise. So, Nils, uh, chairing the uh, production council, please come up here and let me uh, ask you what you think about this, because it, it must be sort of a, a daunting task to, to, to chair the production council. I mean, it's a great responsibility that you have, that we all in Denmark have jobs 10 years from now. So, so after today, what are you more, scared or optimistic? Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic, but I was optimistic before I came. Uh, but I've, I've not gotten less optimistic. I've been writing quite a few notes down from, uh, from the day here. And, uh, and uh, standing here now being asked to, to provide some concluding remarks. It's actually it's not that easy. Uh, but but I've, I tried to group it into two different things. And maybe just come back to the question at the end. That's and then, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll hold you to the And question. then uh, just, uh, at least for me, try to pick up some of the most important themes are some of the things coming in here. And I, and I think it's always nice starting, is this important or is it not important? I think it's important. I think just judging by the, uh, the attendance we have, judging by what we have heard from all our, our colleagues in other countries, and we've been around Holland, Sweden, Singapore, the US, a lot of countries that have similar, sim similar themes, similar issues on the table. We've heard our minister this morning uh, talk about uh, how important the Danish politicians see this, and uh, and I think we are all aware that that is something that is luckily very broadly spread uh, on the political scene. That the importance of the issue of manufacturing and production is high. Well, we heard uh, OECD also echo that and show some uh, also statistical and data facts substantiating that. So so it's important. Um, we heard. We have things like it is the foundation, it is the lowest level of the Maslow's pyramid. I really liked Ineke from, from Holland talking about the earnings power. Maybe that's a way for us to also get it on the mind of the broader population. Uh, there's no doubt that set in many different ways, jobs in production manufacturing are high value added jobs relative to many other jobs. Also relative to especially probably many indirect uh, service jobs. Um, we just heard Professor Xi talk about the fact that uh, it's not only important just to have it, but the impact of not having it is exactly losing this collective uh, knowledge about not only then manufacturing production in the long run, but the ability to innovate. If we cannot innovate and we don't have production, then I get scared about what we would live off. So uh, the, the link between manufacturing and R&D and innovation, I think we've heard several speakers talk about that, several panel discussions in different ways, uh, all the way from Vestas uh, uh, up to, it's important. So it's clear uh, that uh, it is also a sense for all, a way to, to, to get high productivity uh, in a country. There's no doubt that some of these jobs that we're talking about, we can always get back to whether there will be more, we can keep the same or whatever, but they are highly productive. They're highly value added. And if we don't stop at least the decline of manufacturing jobs, we will never get to the kind of productivity increase we need to sustain the wealth and the welfare we have. So I think from the nodding around the room, I can, I can kind of feel that it is important. That's why you're in the room. That's why we're debating this. And that's why we're quite happy that the government of Denmark has put this on the agenda, as has some other countries done already. Now, secondly, I noted really that we cannot look at manufacturing without looking at this new industrial revolution. It's everything, whether it's industry, whether it's the fourth generation or it's the fifth, as Peter was, uh, was saying, I don't know. But it is a revolution. It's the Internet of Things. It's ICT. It's connectivity. It's big data. It's all those things that we call kind of put into place uh, that will have an influence here uh, on that. And uh, I think Peter Marsh was saying it. It is happening. So whether we like it or not, it's happening. And uh, the minister was quite clear this morning saying, it's not business as usual. We have, it's not an option not to go on this. And uh, I actually like this case of the, uh, the faster horse or the, or the car. And, and I think that is probably a good way to talk to the point that we cannot not do this. Even if it has negative implications on the short term, this is the way uh, forward. It actually led on to several discussions around that we must see this as an opportunity. And, and, and on some of the things I heard, I was actually sitting there saying, okay, what, are you, what uh, I, I kind of felt a little bit also hit as a business leader in saying that I think 50% of what we talked about is actually things that should flow into business strategies. And maybe the other 50%. 
is something that really has to do with with uh, with uh, more like policy making and policy response to things. So it's really not a clear cut one or the other way. And and, and I, uh, I I heard things that I I brought with me home. One of the issues on on this one, the new industrial revolution, that I think is especially important in Denmark, where I think like Holland we have a structure with many small and mid-sized uh, companies. It is dangerous if the small and mid-sized companies on average are lacking the frontier, as Catherine from OECD was talking about. But on the other hand, we heard Anders from Vestas say, okay, now it's much easier to be innovative as a small company because, because you have access to all these data and you can do that. So it's a little bit of a, uh, of a dilemma here and I think we then need, as a country of Denmark, to be good at using the opportunity part of it. And, uh, and I think we have some some work to do. They are also noted that with, with this new industrial revolution, uh, we see a tendency of, of moving from products to more solutions. And I can say even in my own business, where we've been looking at ourselves as a component provider or product provider for a long time, we think in solutions. Uh, there's no doubt for me that's the way to go, and the, the new industrial revolution, whatever we call it, will only fuel that, uh, uh, that journey. Now that moves me on to what I, uh, the point number three here that I called ambition. And it was not something we talked a lot about, but I did make some, some notes here. I really, I liked, as I said, the earnings power. It is really what will, uh, looking at that, I think it will get our priorities right. It is, at the end of the day, how this can contribute to welfare and wealth that's important. And that should be our guiding light in, uh, in, 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 uh, in making priorities. Um, we've had a lot of discussions around how do you how do you target set something like this? What is the target? You've been asking questions, and Peggy as well as, can we get more employment in this area? Uh, I don't think I would stand here and have the answer for that. Uh, my ambition would definitely be that we stop the curve going down, but maybe maybe the that's not the only question we should ask. Maybe it, re it really is about the value, and that's back to the earnings power, because value to society is of course employment but it's also productivity that transforms into competitiveness that actually makes us get a bigger share of the pie that then eventually could lead to more employment. So, uh, so that's some of the discussions we also have in the Danish Production Council around that, and there's no doubt that we need to not only look at employment, we also need to look to value uh, to society. Uh, but clearly here it has priority, and, uh, and compared to many other initiatives around employment, there's no doubt that in a world where we see everything we see, we, we, we look into a period that we may have scarce resources in developed countries, I think then we want our resources deployed where they add more value. And there's no doubt that manufacturing jobs add more value than the average indirect service job. So, so I think ambition-wise, I got some input there, but I think there's something for us uh, to think about. Then I uh, have a little group of things I call themes or complications uh, actually to the story. Um, I was a little intrigued by this discussion about manufacturing and service uh, and, uh, and I actually wrote a note to myself here of not uh, making sure we don't get confused because I think I think here there is some some truth to what has been said but I think we probably need to be a little more detailed than just saying than manufacturing and service. In my mind talking about solutions there are definitely services that move close to manufacturing. That could be like things that are embedded in the product or are directly linked to a product. So when, when Vestas is out there monitoring, maintaining a wind turbine that they have produced and sold, fine for me, that's very close to, uh, that's a product, it's called a service or manufacturing, but that's kind of the embedded part of it. I think those kind of services provide growth opportunities. And those jobs that comes out of that have the same kind of opportunity for productivity as has kind of more traditional manufacturing jobs. I think the other part of service that is quite distinctly different, that's kind of the indirect or the support services in a society. That's the legal advice, that's the taxi driver, that's the hairdresser. And I think relatively to thinking manufacturing or production, that is more like not so much a growth opportunity, that's actually more a cost that needs to fit the value it provides. And that's one of the issues, I think. I also heard here between the lines that that is actually something that also needs to be effective and productive in a country. If it isn't, it puts a drag on the manufacturing side. 
So it's related, but I just wanted to clarify that in my mind, service is not just service. Service needs to be looked at what kind of service uh, it is. Uh, long discussions around this focus and prioritization, whatever we heard uh, David from Singapore talk about, Inika from Holland, also Professor Xi here towards the end. Uh, also Catherine actually on this uh, and it was called everything from uh, focusing on strongholds uh, and there was a few offers for what that could be looking at both horizontals in terms of the application knowledge stuff and the verticals in terms of um, technology clearly and I would say I can personally uh, get on that boat saying it doesn't make sense from a small country to try to boil the ocean uh, it probably doesn't make sense for any country to try to pick the winners but there is kind of a continuum in between that. And I think we need to find our spot in there that somehow will create, uh, require some kind of focus or prioritization. Um, moving on, uh, I called the next one solutions because that's actually what I really hope to get away from here. That is actually with some concrete ideas because come May, the production council here has to come up with concrete ideas for what the Danish society can actually do to move forward here. And, and it's clear, uh, just uh, getting back to some of the first speakers from, from Vestas, we heard about the importance of productivity, but also flexibility. The importance of getting our brightest minds into engineering. The importance of also being able to pull in international talent uh, into the country uh, to, to grow. Uh, I, I think from Holland, I took a lot of inspiration in the field labs and would actually like to learn more about the detail of that. I think that's a concept that... that uh, it goes very well with some of the, th the talks we've had uh, and, uh, and I think we need to figure out what would be a good Danish implementation of, of something similar. Uh, Johan from Sweden talked a lot about the, the Swedish Production Academy and I think we've taken the first steps of crawling, if you can say that, in Denmark with the MATE initiative that also I think, um, and very much to my agreement, uh, got a lot of positive feedback and actually also advocacy for expanding that and making more out of that. Uh, also, uh, I think recommended here by Professor Xi in terms of those kinds of uh, initiatives on research that will carry forward. Um, took note of, uh, of course, these indirect or support services, I think here is especially in Denmark a problem. I think that came out of the OECD numbers and we've seen that in, in different ways. So there is an issue for us in Denmark to work with. In terms of uh, OECD talked about that the small and mid-sized companies uh, 40% uh, of them had difficulties getting loans, which was kind of, or could get loans, which was the lowest percentage. Uh, uh, she had a very quick note about business angels, and I think that's, that's, part of the, uh, that's probably part of the answer, and we're looking into that. It also turns out that Danish small and medium-sized companies tend to be less capitalized than in other countries. So often things go hand in hand, uh, but just not uh, take away the importance of solving that, uh, uh, that issue. Uh, that uh, brought me on to some of the uh, uh, things that we also talked about, education, and education it was several times said, listen, like it's, it's more quality than it's quantity, and it's really about now also engaging our young people and the brightest young people to also study engineering and scientific studies where they eventually add more value to society after that. Uh, several times, and lately here by Professor Xi also, it was mentioned that frame conditions are are uh, important and we should not make tax regimes that makes things difficult. We've not spent a lot of time on that today, um, uh, but I, I don't think that's because it's not important, but I actually like that we spend time on a lot of other stuff. So in my mind, if I would offer just a, a wrap up, I, I've actually grouped things in three areas. I think there is one area that is about recognition of the importance of this. And on this area, I'm singing to the choir when I'm in this room because you guys are here because you understand the importance and you want to, to push forward on this. I think by and large politicians are getting there uh, and, uh, and also showing willingness to, to really start to act. I'm probably a little bit more in doubt whether the broad population has fully got it so far. So, so I would think there is still a theme of making sure that the, the importance to society of this gets broadened out because only when, when the public opinion is really backing something that gives more power for politicians to do something. So there is an issue around recognition. Then, uh, of course, there is, um, and I always use this, uh, if you have a rope and you want that rope through a small hole, it, it's very hard to push it through. It, it's a lot easier to, to pull it through. Uh, and therefore, I also think we need to work on both ends of the rope here. And there are some things around 
frame conditions, around incentives. Incentives for making investments go up, because we saw we have pretty low investments in Denmark. Investments to, uh, incentives to make sure we fund the small and, and mid-sized businesses better. Um, incentives that we get more people into engineering studies. Incentives in terms of pushing forward initiatives like MATE uh, more. Um, and of course, incentives on tax that at least we don't do stupid things, but, uh, but I could maybe even be so optimistic that we could even do something on tax that could actually uh, make good things or make things better. So there is a, an incentive part, a pulling of the rope part, and then of course there is the enablers. And we spent more time, I think, today on the enablers or removing barriers in terms of making sure that we have sufficient, skilled, highly educated or relevantly educated um, um, labor, uh, research, field labs, productivity, a lot of stuff I, uh, I have mentioned in terms of uh, enablers for that to happen. So I think that would be my wrap up in saying how did, how did I hear what was there and, and, uh, and you probably have a question or two, Charlotte, but, but uh, before that I think I, will, uh, I would like on behalf of the Production Council to, to really thank you all for participating very actively and lively in this uh, dialogue today and it's been great having real input from also outside the country that this was not becoming just a, a Danish exercise and it's clear to me that there are other people that have had similar thoughts and in some areas are actually ahead of us that we can learn from and we will take that inspiration um, into our work. So uh, thank you very much from, from my side. And thank you Nils for <laughs> wrapping up. <laughs> Sounds like you as chair of the panel uh, have quite a lot of takeaways from today which is, was the point of it actually, mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's a good thing. Um, the optimism you have uh, is clear ab about that this has possibilities and we can do it. Do you have that same optimism, would be my only question, in relation to having politicians take your pieces of advice and actually turning them into reality? Because we've seen plenty of uh, expert groups coming up with reports and recommendations mm. that have barely ever become reality. Yes, I do. And I, I must say, I think um, we have a history here of having these growth teams for different areas. I had the opportunity myself to chair one of those. and. And I think there we've actually seen a willingness to, to work with that. We've seen things come through already. We've also seen that if they don't come through, at least we work with it and there's explanation for why. So uh, I guess just, just the mere fact that I'm standing here means that I, I do believe that we can make a difference and, uh, and, uh, and that I think goes for, for the entire team here that we are, we are putting a lot of effort into this because we believe it matters and we believe we can make a difference. Well, best of luck on that. I know you have to deliver your recommendations come May, mm -hmm. so I guess you're busy. Absolutely. So please enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, yeah.